Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Gate Geometrics Engineering. In this channel, we shall learn and explore geometrics engineering related domain. If you are new in this channel, then please go through our videos and subscribe to support us. And most importantly, give your valuable feedback in comment section for more improvement. So, today we are going to start a new topic that is basic principle of GNSS and data collection method. And before going into that topic, we have to have an idea about triangulation and trilateration. So, what is triangulation? Triangulation is a process of determining location of a point by forming triangles by that point and other known reference points using law of sign. So, here we can see a triangle and I am naming that triangle at ABC and here we know the point A and B, but the point C is unknown to us and we have to find out the position of C and as we know the point A and B, so we can easily calculate the angle alpha and beta and that we, you will see in the surveying portion also that how can we calculate this angle. So, if we know the angle alpha and beta, then I am assuming that this angle is theta. So, we can easily calculate the angle theta by the equation that is theta equal to 180 degree minus alpha minus beta. Now, according to sine law, we know that the ratio between the sine of an angle and the side opposite to it is going to be constant for any of the angles in a triangles. So, if we write this sine law, then it will look that look like this sine alpha and its opposite side that is BC equal to sine beta and its opposite that is AC and sine theta and its opposite that is AB. So, from that we can easily calculate AC and BC. So, AC will become AB into sin beta by sin theta and BC will become AB sin alpha by sin theta. So, here you can calculate the side AC and BC and you know already know the position of A and B. So, based on that you can easily find out the position of C and you can also check the position of C by dropping a perpendicular from point C. Dropping a perpendicular means that is 90 degree and to calculate this we have to uh, do that AC equal to AC sin alpha equal to if we name this point as Q equal to QC. So, if our this calculation is right then AC sin alpha equal to QC equal to BC sin beta will definitely occur and if it is true then our position calculation is correct. Then we shall move to the trilateration and trilateration is the actual method that is used in satellite positioning. So, what is this? It is a method used to determine a relative position of any point or object with the help of two or more reference point of known location. So, so we have already discussed it that how in 2D, 2D plane we can calculate the position using radio navigation in earlier videos. So, you can check out that videos also. So, uh, in 2D plane we know that in 2D plane that is forming a circle and three circle never intersect in more than one point. So, that is why this is the position and in case of satellite the circle becomes a sphere. So, 
at least four four sphere is needed in 3d plane to intersect at one point and that is the point where the observer is located at, or that is the position of the observer and that's how the using the trial iteration method the position is calculated now we shall uh, know it elaborately in the next slides so let us move to the next slide here we shall learn the basic concept behind satellite positioning so for that time and range are the two important parameter so distance from satellite that is p1 p1 can be calculated using the velocity of signal that is c because we know that the signal transmitted at, at the speed of light and the time taken by the signal there are two process one is code correlation and another one is carrier frequency we shall learn that in the next slide and for 2d positioning there are three satellites are required and for 3d positioning four satellites are required so from this equation we can easily know the p1 value we know the velocity of the signal and the time taken to reach that signal to the receiver that is t this two uh, this is calculated by the receiver and this is we already know and based on that p1 can be calculated so here p1 is known to us and x1 y1 z1 these are the calculation is done by almanac and ephemeris data so using this almanac and ephemeris data we can calculate the x1 y1 z1 and i have already discussed this almanac and ephemeris data in the previous videos please go and check out those videos also and so we know the uh, x1 y1 z1 and and uh, the p1 also and we have to calculate the xr yr and zr that is the actual location of the observer so here uh, p1 is calculated by this equation and p1 can also be written as x square plus y square plus z square and that can also be written like this xr minus x1 square plus yr minus y1 square plus zr minus z1 square plus the error term so so using that we can find out this equation and this is one of the important equation for satellite navigation so if we find out this equation then there are three unknowns four unknowns actually that is xr yr zr and this t this t is actually the uh, error term so we have to calculate four number of unknowns so that's why we need four equation so for so that if using this concept you can easily understand that why 3d positioning needed four satellites and 2d positioning needed three satellites because for 2d positioning there are three unknowns two are the xr and yr and another one is the del t that is error term c into del t and for 3d positioning four satellites are required because there are four unknown one the the four unknowns are xr yr zr and the del t so you can easily understand that how the using the satellite navigation we can calculate the position of the receiver or position of the observer now let us move to the next slide now in this slide we shall learn about brief classification of gnss technique and brief classification of data collection method there are no proper classification methods of gnss uh, techniques and the and data collection methods for understanding purpose i have made this classification so uh, the measurement technique can be classified in 
two ways that is one is code based and another one is career based. I have earlier discussed with you various codes that is course acquisition code and P code and using this code the technique is used the code correlation techniques and based on that the time is calculated and using that time the code based measurement is done and another one is career based measurement in career based measurement there are uh, two various types of career frequencies are there which I have already discussed with you please check out uh, my previous videos uh, those are L1, L2 using those codes uh, carriers also we can calculate the position that is uh, something called ambiguity measurement or like that so we shall learn about those uh, in the upcoming videos so using code based techniques and the carrier based techniques we can measure the location of the observer and the using the, the data collection method based on the data collection method the GNSS system can be classified in point positioning, relative positioning and DGNSS positioning that is differential GNSS positioning we shall uh, do a separate video for DGNSS and for point positioning there are two type of positioning one is stand alone single point positioning another one is precise point positioning and in relative positioning the four types of relative positioning are static rapid static stop and go and real time kinetics so that's all in this video in the next video we shall learn about the various types of measurement techniques and various data collection methods